what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel now let's look at this fine question from olympia that we have here which says the square root of 12 to the power x minus 16 to the power x is equal to 3 to the power x minus 4 to the power x and we have to look for the value of x so what is given to us is the square root of the left hand side which is 12 to the power x minus 16 to the power x equal to the right hand side which is 3 to the power x minus 4 to the power x we just have to take the square of both sides so that we get rid of the square root so let's do that now see the square is going to go with the square root leaving behind 12 to the power x minus 16 to the power x equal to now what i have on the right hand side can be expanded so let's expand what we have here now i'm going to square this first one since the power is two so i'm going to be raising this to power two which is three to power x to the power of two which is this two here now the next thing i'm going to do is to multiply everything two times three to power x times negative four to power x is going to give me minus two 3 to the power x and 4 to the power x. That is it. Now, lastly, I'm going to square this negative 4 to the power x because the power is 2, so I'm going to be squaring that. So, square this. I'm going to have 4 to the power x to the power 2. That is it. So, this expansion comes from here. So, since I have 3 to the power x, 4 to the power x, on the right hand side i can be able to split what i have on the left hand side to have three and four so let's do that here so this is four times three raised to power x which is the same thing as 12 to power x minus this is four to power two four to power two is going to give me 16 and this is raised to power x as we see there so equal to now this is 3 to the power x raised to the power 2 minus 2 times 3 to the power x times 4 to the power x plus. Now this is 4 to the power x raised to the power 2. Look at what we have on the left hand side. I can separate this which is having 4 to the power x times 3 to the power x. Because this power here is affecting the 4 and it's also affecting the 3. So minus, then I'm going to be switching the position of this 2 and x so that I have 4 to the power x raised to the power 2 equal to, now this one is looking good on the right hand side. So I'm going to be writing the same thing that I had before. Very good. Everything is looking well and good. So now let's move forward. Well, our next step will be for us to move everything here on the left to the right hand side so that we have uh, 3 to the power x raised to the power 2 minus 2 into 3x times 4x. Are you seeing that? Plus 4 to the power x squared. Now, as I'm moving what I have on the left to the right hand side, the sign is going to change. So let me move this one first. So when negative 4x to the power 2 moves, it becomes positive here on the right hand side. So 4 to the power x squared. Now this is positive here, but when it moves, it's going to become negative 4 to the power x, 3 to the power x. That is it. So leaving behind 0 on the right hand side. Well, since 0 is on the right hand side, I can go ahead and write whatever I have here first, then equate to 0. So I have 3 to the power x raised to the power 2. Now let me take a look at what I have to see if I have like terms. This is negative 2 of this. Do I have something that looks like this? Good. Look at it here. I was saying that it doesn't matter the position. They, they are the same. So negative 2, the coefficient of this one here is 1. So negative 2 of this minus 1 of this is going to give you negative 3 of 3 to the power x, 4 to the power x. That is it. Are you seeing that? Very good. So 
Do I have another one? Yes. Look at this one here. I have this and this, which are the same. So I have two of them, which is going to give me 2 of 4 to power x raised to power 2. I don't think there is any other thing equal to 0. So our next step is just for us to divide through by 4 to power x squared. So let's do that. I'm going to be dividing this. This is negative, so we don't have to confuse that. So I'm going to be dividing this by 4 to power x squared. I'm also going to divide this by 4 to power x squared. And I'll also divide this by 4 to power x squared. And then lastly, divide this by 4 to power x squared. Remember, I'm dividing through by 4 to power x squared. Now, when I divide this with this, I'm going to be having 3 to power x over 4 to power x and joining the powers they have because they have the same powers. So, minus. Now, one of these is going to go with one of these. Are you seeing that? So, leaving behind just one of that. So, that I have 3. Are you seeing that? 3 into, this is 3 to power x all over 4 to power x. That is it. So, plus, now this is going to go with this, leaving behind 2. Equal to 0 divided by this is going to get 0. Are you seeing that? So, this is getting interesting. Now, look at what I have on the bracket here and what I have on the bracket here. They are pretty the same thing. And if you can see what I'm seeing, that means you're also seeing quadratic here. So let's go. All right. So we can therefore say that let this expression be t. So let t be equal to 3 to power x over 4 to power x, which is the same thing as writing 3 over 4 or raised to power x, since they have the same powers. So wherever I see this, I'm going to be putting t. So look at it here. So this means t squared minus, there's going to be 3t, right? Then plus 2 equal to 0. So this is a nice quadratic equation here. So let's see if we can factorize. This is plus 2. So this is plus 2, which has a factor. This is negative 3. So negative 1, negative 2 is going to give me negative 1 times negative 2 is 2, positive. Then negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. So this is correct. So our factors are going to be t minus 1 and what? t minus 2 equal to 0. And when you solve this, you're going to see that uh, t minus 1 is equal to 0 or t minus 2 is equal to 0. So t here from what we have here, when I move negative 1 to the right hand side, t becomes 1. Or when I move negative 2 to the right hand side, t becomes what? 2. Very good. Very good. We're really doing well in this regard. So now, remember what we said. I'm going to be taking this one as case 1. So let's do case 1, which is going to give me my first solution. Remember that we said uh, t is what? This expression here. Is that not so? So let's say when t is 1. That's our case 1. So I'm bringing out this as t. So 3 over 4 raised to the power of x. So that is our t. That's what we have here. Equal to the value of t we have in the first case is 1. So equal to 1. So I need the base on the left to be the same as the base on the right, which is possible because this one can also be written as this one can also be written as 3 over 4 raised to power 0. Are you seeing that? Good. Because any value raised to power of 0 is going to give you 1. So this one can also be written like this. Now look at it. The base on the left and the base on the right are actually the same. So I can equate the power. So the value of x here is going to be equal to 0. Very good. So now let's pay attention to the other value of t, which we have as 2. So now let's go. So our case 2 is going to be when t is equal to 2. Remember what t is? t is 3 over 4 raised to the power of x, right? And now it is equal to 2 here. 
There is no way we can make the base on the right to be the same as the base on the left. And since we have an exponential here, we can do something. We can take the natural log of both sides. So take the natural log, which is ln of 3 over 4 to power x equal to ln of 2. Are you seeing that? Good. Remember the law of logarithm, which says that whenever I have a log of a number raised to a power, let's say n, this is equal to, we're going to be using the power to multiply the log of a. So I'm going to be applying this law of logarithm here. So I'm going to be taking the power x and use it to multiply the natural log of 3 over 4. Are you saying that? Equal to what I have on the right hand side, natural log of 2. So in order to make s the subject, this is a coefficient. So I'm going to be using it to divide both sides. So natural log of 3 over 4 all over the natural log of 3 over 4. Are you seeing that? So this can cancel off, leaving behind x to be equal to what I have on the right hand side all over this. Are you seeing that? Very good. Very, very interesting. Well, I believe this is what we have as the final answer. Well, if you really learned something from this video and you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.